The Apple event was broadcasted a few hours ago, so let's see what it was introduced. A handful of products were introduced today, so the iPhone 14 lineup, the new lineup of Apple Watches, and the AirPods Pro's second gen. So why not start with the Apple Watches since they are the most innovative one from my opinion. We actually got both an update for the normal series and the SE. A new Apple Watch was also introduced being the Apple Watch Ultra. Across the lineup they added a new feature called crash detection. So for example if you are in a car accident and your Apple Watch notices that then it will automatically call 911 for you and it will actually inform them about your location and other infos that it will have about you at the time. The AT&T Ultra got two new features that are really exciting from my point of view. So basically the temperature sensor and the battery saving feature. The first one, the temperature sensor, is actually able to track the periods of a woman and it can actually help overall by sleep tracking. The other one, on the other hand, is able to provide you with more battery, but it doesn't work as the old one where you could not use your Apple Watch while being on low power mode, but this one actually enables the Apple Watch at full use without some small features. Alongside the information that I already gave you about the Apple Watch Series 8, I cannot tell you something more. I just think that they settled down because they don't really care. The competition is not as good as the Apple Watches are, so they just don't care. The Apple Watch Series 8 starts from $400 for the normal one, so the GPS model and from 500 for the cellular one. You'll be able to order them today and they will be available from September 16th. The Apple Watch SE isn't that much of an upgrade either, let's say. It's getting 20% faster and basically smaller bezels, but it's not that game-changing. This is going to start from $300 and it's also orderable today and it will be available from, again, September 16th. The best overall watch that Apple has introduced yet is the Apple Watch Ultra. So this Apple Watch is built with resistance in mind and with really extreme use scenarios. So they actually showcase a diving with the Apple Watch and it works out really well. They optimized it in a way so that an app on the Apple Watch will actually tell you how deep in the water you get and overall how you perform. After a third party collaboration, they're saying that a new app that's coming on the App Store is going to be able to replace the whole equipment for diving. Why that? Because the Apple Watch is going to replace all the equipment that you will need for diving. So that's really cool. It will be able to get 36 hours of battery life. It actually has features like tracking where you were and pinpointing something on a map. There are three microphones and tuning speakers on the actual Apple Watch, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference. I really think that this Apple Watch is expensive. Coming at $800, it doesn't really make sense for a watch to cost that much. If you really need an Apple Watch that's really resistant, then this is your way to go. Outside of that, the design is okay-ish. I mean, I don't like it personally, but it's just the design and you can look that up for yourself and decide for yourself whether you like it or not. But it still makes much more sense to buy this compared to buying an actual Rolex. Pre-orders are starting today and it's actually going to come out on September 23rd. Now that we are done with the Apple Watch, let's actually switch to the AirPods. Thanks to the T2 chip and the actual drivers that these headphones have, it's, it is actually promised that they will sound much better than the actual AirPods Pros that we have right now. So they are promising a much better noise cancelling and a much better transparency mode. How are they doing that? Because the T2 is optimized in a way to be able to actually cancel out more noises than before. Meanwhile, the transparency mode is actually optimized to be able to reduce the volume of background noises and pop out the volume of actually human voices. So the feature is really getting upgraded. So there are new gestures too. I mean, you can swipe up to the headphones and swipe down to be able to control the volume, which is really nice. These headphones are starting from $220, which is the base cost of the old AirPods Pros, which is really good from my point of view. I mean, there's getting a significant update for how good the AirPods Pros are. I'm sure this will sound amazing. We come to the last point of the video, being the iPhones. So let's start off with the options available. We actually get an iPhone 14, an iPhone 14 Pro, an iPhone 14 Pro Max, and an iPhone 14 Plus, which unfortunately replaced the old iPhone mini lineup. The iPhone 14 comes equipped with an A15 chip, which is basically the old but new chip that we actually found last year in the Pro models. I don't blame that for doing so and for including the last year chip, but they are trying to differentiate the Pros from the normals even more. 
which is okay from a marketing standpoint, but it's not okay from actually the customer standpoint. So the phone is actually getting a new thermal management, so it's going to have much better temperature. So because the iPhone 14 Plus is actually bigger than the iPhone 14, it's going to house a bigger battery, so your phone will last a bit longer. So of course there couldn't be an iPhone announcement without a camera upgrade. So this year we are getting some bigger sensors that can get 50% more lighting. And with the help of the A15 optimization, they actually improved the photo processing that we are not getting into today. So along the camera upgrades, I actually appreciate which is an actual mode that will be able to analyze the clip and stabilize it while recording it. Apple has not specified at how many FPS this will work, but because they haven't specified it, I think it's going to be pretty low. They ditched the SIM card slot. I mean, I don't get it. Right now, we're not ready to have a phone without a SIM card slot. This decision will actually impact the whole industry, as we've seen in 2016, as Apple removed the headphone jack. They actually added crash detection too, which is basically the same thing as I explained with the Apple Watch. And now, something really useful that Apple introduced with this phone. You can do emergency calls with satellites, even in areas that aren't covered with cellular data. Just point your phone to the sky and you can call any help services. This feature can be used to send text messages that can take maximum two minutes to arrive. Furthermore, you can share your location with someone using directly satellite connection. Unfortunately, this feature is going to be free for only two years and we do not know how much it's going to cost. The normal iPhone 14 costs $800. In the meanwhile, the 14 Plus costs $900. Pre-orders are starting again today and it's going to be available the 23rd of September. Alongside the improvements of the iPhone 13, we get actually some steps up on the iPhone 14 Pro. Talking about the design, the phone looks almost the same as the iPhone 13, with just bigger cameras, but the notch is finally gone. It actually got replaced by a hole punch. What does that mean? It's actually a big black bar that doesn't look as good as the notch in my opinion, but when you turn on the phone, that's the point where it really shines. It's well integrated with the software and announcements get really really cool with that phone as they pop from that hole punch. The display has been improved too. It goes up to 1600 nits while watching HDR content and while being outside it can hit a maximum of 2000 nits, which is basically amazing from my point of view. Due to the new processor display with the technology LTPO 2.0, this phone is actually getting the long wanted always on display feature which doesn't only get the information about the time and the day but actually the whole home screen stays on which is really cool so the real part where this phone shines is again the camera part so this phone has actually gotten a 65 percent larger sensor again than from the last year it's a 46 megapixel camera which is amazing i mean they have a technology where they basically combine four pixels into one to basically optimize much more the 16 megapixel photos but you cannot actually select the 46 megapixel photos if you do not select the raw photos so basically what are raw photos raw photos are actually photos without processing so you will have to do that yourself which isn't something user-friendly and something that you want to do in a daily basis. You can have a 2x physical zoom. Why, how does it achieve that? It basically crops into the photo and because the details are really good, it looks like it's a harder thing. Sadly, we do not really get the 8K videos that we hoped for, but we get an upgraded cinematic mode with 4K at 30 FPS. The Pro actually costs $1,000 and the Pro Max costs $1,100. The pre-orders are starting September 9th and it will be available the September 16th. WatchOS and iOS are going to come out the 12th September, which I'm really excited about. Shout out to Riley, who helped me actually write the script for this video because I was really running late by recording. So thanks a lot. Besides that, hope you like the video and see you in the next one.